This is Neil Buchanan with Rock Our World. I've determined to get, turn it around. I just forgot. This is Rock Our World with Neil Buchanan. The Rock is Yeshua. He's first. He's the most important. And uh, this teaching, I think, will be a short one. I'm going to teach on what Christians call communion. Uh, I'm suddenly reminded that uh, the Jewish people, in a very strong sense, have observed this for all the thousands of years and let's you know, specifically talk about the 2000 uh, years since Yeshua was here and the troubled times that they've had to endure they have a tradition uh, a very meaningful tradition uh, they, they observe Sabbath evenings as the Sabbath begins at sunset they have the bread, they, they call it challah bread, and they have red wine, and they uh, treat these two, um, I'm going to call them symbols, they treat these two things as extremely important, and they, they thank the Lord for the bread and the wine, and they uh, meaningful and heartfully are grateful to the God who created all these things, and they they, both they and the Christians, don't, don't realize that the one we call Jesus Christ is the one they call Yahweh, the one that gave the Torah to Moses on Mount Sinai. And once you read these three books I've referred to, the book of Enoch, the book of Jubilees, and the book of Jasher, you can see clearly that that was just uh, one, one giving of the Torah, that Adam and Eve were taught the Torah, as were all the the patriarchs of the ages, including uh, Abel and Enoch, who walked with God and was taken, and we saw him no more. That is, he went to paradise. He's a very important person, and his book is very important. And then on to Noah, Shem, who taught Abraham, and you can read that in uh, I've. I've given you this book before by Joseph Bumpkin. If you are able to get this one, there's quite a number of other books, and one of them uh, reveals that uh, Abraham was taught directly by Noah and Shem. I think it was about 30 years he spent with them. And uh, so of course, Abraham then learned the Torah from them. This information was taught and carried along by all the, the patriarchs, the, the people that God had given to teach us his ways. And then uh, there was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they all learned from each other as the, the fathers taught the sons, and then the 12 tribes of Israel, and then we come to Egypt. And that's the point where I've been teaching a lot from, that in these last days will be a replay of the Exodus, and I've been calling it the last Exodus. So that was the first one. In Egypt, the 12 tribes were taken there. Joseph prepared the way, and then in the course of 400 years, they became they came into bondage, and God delivered them from Egypt. Just like he will uh, deliver us from Babylon today, those are both metaphors that mean the same thing. Uh, we're leaving Egypt, we're leaving Babylon. Nonetheless, I'm getting off on a rabbit trail. The Jewish people give great regard and importance to the bread and the wine uh, for thousands of years. And here uh, in this modern age, Christians believe correctly what Yeshua taught them just before he died on the cross. He, he gave them three symbols, uh, two of which are the bread and the wine. And the third one, the washing of feet. These are the three things we should do on Passover every year, which is the 14th day after the spring equinox. Enoch described all these things, how the calendars work, calendar that, it re that regulates the, the uh, year and you, what you use to find the seven festivals, and then uh, the moon, we'll call it a moon calendar, but... I just call it a moon cycle, regulates the Sabbath days and the new moon festival. 
And the moon and sun are both being pulled off their courses as we speak in these last number of months. They, there's some belief that this planet X, this rogue planet, is the one responsible for this. And so the, the times predicted by their rabbis uh, on into the future are getting further and further out of sync. And we will be challenged more and more with uh, watching the sun and the moon for ourselves so that we know when the Sabbaths are, the new moon festivals, and the yearly festivals. And the Lord, increasingly in these years ahead, will do dramatic things on his festival days. The first, uh, the first of which this year is going to happen just a few days from now. The Passover is coming in a few days, and then the day after will begin the first day of unleavened bread and during that first week is when Yeshua uh, rose from the dead on the third day and that was the Sabbath that was in the midst of the of the days of unleavened bread that's when obviously harvest had started because that's what we're supposed to do the first fruit uh, celebration is on the Sabbath that uh, is the end of the week the farmers start to harvest barley and put them in bins into their barns. Anyway, I'm still getting a little off track here, although these are all related subjects. So what has happened here very recently, my wife, and I believe this was the Lord, put this in her heart. Uh, she spoke out one morning during our morning prayers and said, uh, I think we should have a fast where we only eat bread and drink wine as using as symbols that Yeshua taught us and I immediate, immediately felt in my heart and my spirit that that was a direct instruction from the Lord and I said yes and I think we're to do it for the rest of this moon cycle which at that point was three weeks and uh, the new moon festival just ended two days ago the moon presented itself on Tuesday in our part of the world and that is this the sign from the moon that the new new moon festival is over and now we know when the Sabbath will be for the next four weeks and that is Tuesday in our part of the world the next four Sabbaths will be Tuesday and then we will be able to uh, use it as a calculation a temporary calculation because I need to know when harvest begins in Israel to do this properly but uh, using the example on that week that Yeshua died it was the Sabbath in the midst of the of the uh, days of unleavened bread now we know when those are because the the equinox has come and passed so we know when the 15th day for the first day of unleavened bread is and we know when the 21st is for this last day of unleavened bread and in that seven day period there's always going to be one sabbath and now we know it'll be on the babylonian calendar it's tuesday uh, just to make a transference of these but the sun and the moon give the signs for all these things and nobody can uh, take them out of the sky so any believer can find these times and these signs so then we'll begin the count from that Sabbath, which is, in this case, in our part of the world, is going to be the first day of unleavened bread. And we'll count seven Sabbaths, I'm sorry, seven weeks. And a week is an idiom for a unit of six working days and one Sabbath. It, so obviously it does not include the new moon festivals. So in the count of seven weeks, there will be one new moon festival and it'll be either one day or two days. Those won't get counted and then at the end of this count of seven weeks will be the Feast of Weeks, which the Greek translators purposely, meaningful, dishonestly named Pentecost. That is not its name. It's the Feast of Weeks. So I just want to give a, a brief teaching on what Christians call communion. God doesn't call that uh, anywhere in the scriptures or the New Testament, which we have called the inspired commentary. I think it's a reasonable description to be to commune with our Lord, but a better description of it would be uh, uh, 
a ceremony, which is a reaffirmation, if that's the right word, to reaffirm our covenant that we've made with Jesus Christ, that we agree to the terms, that we uh, accept his blood as payment for our sins in the past, and we accept his broken body as payment for our, not only our physical healing, but our spiritual healing, our healing, our emotional healing in this physical lifetime, and that he is the bread of life, and that taking the bread into our bodies represents taking Yeshua into our hearts and accepting the fullness of his physical healing, his, uh, again, emotional, mental, uh, and spiritual healing. All these things are the healing that we need as Yeshua comes into our hearts and heals our heart and begins to operate in and through us through the Holy Spirit. And that uh, the wine represented the, the blood that was spilled when he hung on the cross and it paid the penalty of the sins of many. Yeshua said all these words when he gave these symbols to his disciples. And one of the things my wife uh, came up with during this fast was that the, the blood, of course, is living blood, and we get a transfusion of living blood, that when we drink this wine, this red wine, that we are drinking living blood into our bodies, that just as the Lord says, the life is in the blood. We drink this blood, it brings a transfusion of living blood into us, and it displaces the dead blood that's in, that we have. We are dead men and women until we go through this transformation of having Jesus come into our hearts, of accepting his blood as payment for our former sins and our future mistakes. But it does not cover meaningful sin. So you get into the realm of temp testing or tempting God when you sin knowingly after you, you have accepted these two symbols and have had Jesus come into your heart. So that's clarification for anyone who will listen. The, the blood of Yeshua does not cover uh, knowing future sin. Our quest, it covers mistakes and human weakness, but it doesn't cover knowing sin. When we sin know, knowingly, we are entering the realm of tempting the Lord. And if we continue, he will do something about it. He will either uh, correct us to the point we have to change or <laughs> get enough pressure that we do change, or he will take our lives. And no, we won't spend our lives in eternal hell. We will uh, simply miss out on the great reward that's offered to us. And... Uh, I'll just throw this in. Rewards uh, in eternity are based on our works. And there's a lot of teaching about this. And a lot of teachers out there say works have no place. That the gift of God is uh, of grace. And that is correct. That the gift of God is through grace. We cannot earn salvation. But we definitely earn a reward by our works. So uh, you'll get to know what works are when you start this journey. Um, a very simplified, if you want to do a great deal in a short time, do what Yeshua said. Uh, actually, it was one of the writers. This is true religion to visit the father, the widows and the fatherless in their affliction. There's nothing, nothing else you do in this life. Take time. Take all of your time and you'll have a great reward to help widows and to help those who have no fathers. That would be uh, mostly young people. And missing fathers uh, go beyond the father that's dead or missing in action. It's the fathers that uh, spend all their time working, don't pay attention to their children, that are emotionally de detached through all these troubles in life, and who don't take steps to make that effort of connecting with their wives and their children. And uh, people who visit the, fa the fatherless in their affliction are those who take time and invest in other people's lives. Uh, these people that are missing these things. They're missing their fathers 
touch, their, ma their father's approval, their father's investment in their lives. And they are generally turn out to be very hurt, angry young men in most cases. Young men are the biggest problem. And of course, young ladies to a lesser degree because they need their mother's input in their lives in a greater way. But uh, every child needs a father and a mother. And if one or the other or both are missing, they have the greatest need on the face of the earth. The greatest work you can ever do is invest in these people, the widows and the fatherless. So I think I covered all I wanted to do in what Christians call communion. Uh, it would be better called to reaffirm our covenant with our Lord. We are reminded every time we take the bread and the wine, and that's what Yeshua said. He said, as oft as you do this, take this in remembrance of me. And I would, I would propose my opinion that you do it on the Passover day, just as Yeshua died at late afternoon. He was our Passover lamb, but also do it many, many times throughout the year. And do it meaningfully. Do it with understanding of these things I've just explained to you. And um, I'm going to say I have a wrap. So this is Rock Our World with Neil Buchanan.